right, third graders, we're reading the last chapter of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, chapter 10. It's called Dribble. I will never forget Friday, May 10th. It's the most important day of my life. It didn't start out that way. It started out ordinary. I went to school. I ate my lunch. I had gym, and then I walked home from school with Jimmy Fargo. We planned to meet at our special rock in the park as soon as we changed our clothes. In the elevator, I told Henry I was glad summer was coming. Henry said he was too. When I got out at my floor, I walked down the hall and I opened the door to my apartment. I took off my jacket and I hung it up in the closet. I put my books on the hall table next to my mother's purse. I went straight to my room to change my clothes and, try and check dribble. The first thing I noticed was that my chain lat was my chain latch. It was unhooked. My bedroom door was open. And there was a chair smack in the middle of my doorway. I nearly tumbled over it. I ran to my dresser to check dribble. He wasn't there. His bowl with the rocks and the water was there, but dribble was gone. I got really scared. I thought maybe he died while I was at school and I didn't know about it. So I rushed into the kitchen and I hollered, Mom, where's Dribble? My mom was baking something. My brother sat at the kitchen floor banging pots and pans together. Be quiet, I yelled at Fudge. I can't hear anything with that noise. What did you say? My mother asked me. I said I can't find Dribble. Where is he? You mean he's not in his bowl? My mother asked. I shook my head. Oh dear, my mom said. I hope he's not crawling around somewhere. You know I don't like the way he smells. I'm gonna have to look in, I'm gonna have to look in the bedrooms. You check here, Peter. My mother hurried off. I looked at my brother. He was smiling. Fudge, do you know where Triple is? I asked calmly. Fudge kept smiling. Did you take him? Did you, Fudge? I asked, not so calmly. Fudge giggled and covered his mouth with his hands. I yelled now, where is he? What did you do with my turtle? No answer from Fudge. He banged his pots and pans together. I yanked the pots out of his hand. I tried to speak softly. Now tell me where Dribble is. Just tell me where my turtle is. I won't be mad if you just tell me. Come on, Fudge, please. Fudge looked up at me. In tummy, he said. What do you mean, in tummy? I asked, narrowing my eyes. Dribble in tummy, he repeated. What tummy? I shouted at my brother. This one, he said, rubbing his stomach. Dribble in this tummy? right here? I decided to go along with this game. All right, okay. How did he get in there, Fudge? I asked. Fudge stood up. He jumped up and down and he sang out loud. I ate him, ate him, ate him. And then he ran out of the room. My mother came back into the kitchen. Well, I just can't find him anywhere, she said. I looked in all the dresser drawers and the bathroom cabinets and the shower and the tub and Mom, I said, shaking my head, how could you? How could I what, Peter? Mom asked. How could you let him do it? Let who do what, Peter? My mom asked. Let fudge eat dribble, I screamed. My mother started to mix whatever she was baking. Don't be silly, Peter, she said. Dribble is a turtle. He ate dribble, I insisted. Peter Warren Hatcher, stop saying that, my mom hollered. We'll ask him, go ahead, go ahead and ask him, I told her. Fudge was standing in the kitchen doorway with a big old grin on his face, and my mom picked him up and patted his head. Fudgy, she said to him, tell mommy where brother's turtle is. And tummy, Fudge said. What tummy, mom asked. Fine, Fudge laughed. My mother put Fudge down on the kitchen counter where he could not get away from her. Oh, you are, you are fooling mommy, right? No fool, Fudge.
Fudge laughed. My mother turned very pale. You ate your brother's turtle, she said. A big smile came from Fudge. You mean you put him in your mouth? You chewed him up like this? My mom made believe like she was chewing. No, Fudge said. A smile of relief crossed my mother's face. Oh, of course you didn't. It was a joke. She put Fudge down on the floor and gave me a look. Fudge babbled, no chew, no chew, gulp, gulp. All gone turtle, down Fudgy's tummy. Me and my mom stared at Fudge. You didn't, she said. Did so, said Fudge. No, my mom shouted. Yes, Fudge shouted back. Yes? Mom asked weakly, holding onto her chair with both hands. Yes, Fudge said, beaming. My mother moaned and picked up my brother. Oh no, my angel, my precious little baby, oh no! My mother didn't stop to think about my turtle. She didn't even give Dribble a thought. She didn't even stop to wonder how my turtle liked being swallowed by my brother. She ran to the phone with Fudge tucked under one arm, and I followed her. Mom dialed the operator and cried, Oh, help, this is an emergency. My baby ate a turtle. Stop laughing at me, my mom told the operator. Send an ambulance right away, 25 West 68th Street. Mom hung up. She didn't look well. Tears were running down her face. She put Fudge down on the floor. I couldn't understand why she was so upset. Fudge seemed just fine. Help me, Peter, Mom begged. Get me some blankets. I ran into my brother's room, and I grabbed two blankets from his bed. He followed me around with a silly grin on his face. I felt like giving him a pinch. How could he stand there looking so happy when he had my turtle inside of him? I delivered the blankets to my mother. She wrapped Fudge up in them, and she ran for the front door. I followed and grabbed her purse from the hall table. I figured, that, I figured she'd be glad that I thought of that. Out in the hall, I pressed the elevator buzzer. We had to wait a few minutes. Mom paced up and down the front of the elevator. Fudge was cradled in her arms. He sucked his fingers and made that slurping noise that I like, but all I could think about was dribble. Finally, the elevator got to our floor. There were three people in it besides Henry. This is an emergency, my mom wailed. The ambulance is waiting downstairs, please hurry. Yes, Mrs. Hatcher, of course, Henry said. I'll run her down just as fast as I can, no other stops. Someone poked me in the back and I turned around. It was Mrs. Rudder. What's the matter? She whispered. It's my brother, I whispered back. He ate my turtle. Mrs. Rudder whispered that to the man next to her and he whispered it to the lady next to him, who then whispered it to Henry. I faced front and I pretended I didn't hear anything at all. My mother turned around with Fudge in her arms and said, it's not funny, it's not funny at all. But Fudge said, funny, 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 Fudgy. Everyone laughed, everybody except for my mom. The elevator door opened. Two men dressed in white were waiting with a stretcher. Is this the baby? One of them asked. Yes, yes it is, my mom said, sobbing. Don't worry, lady, we'll be at the hospital in no time. Come on, Peter, my mom said, tugging at my sleeve. We're gonna ride in the ambulance with Fudge. My mom and I climbed into the back of the blue ambulance. I was never in one before. It was neat. Fudge kneeled on a cot and peered through the window. He waved at the crowd of people that had gathered on the sidewalk. One of the attendants sat in the back with us. The other one was driving. What seems to be the trouble, lady? The attendant asked. This kid looks pretty healthy to me. He swallowed a turtle, my mom whispered. He did what? The attendant said. He ate my turtle, that's what, I told him. My mother covered her face with her hanky and started to cry all over again. Hey, Joe, the attendant called to the driver. Make it snappy. This one swallowed a turtle. It's not funny, my mother insisted. I didn't think so either, considering it was my turtle. We arrived at the back door of the hospital. Fudge was whisked away by two nurses. My mother ran after him. You wait here, young man, another nurse called to me, pointing to a bench. I sat down on the hard wooden bench. I didn't have anything to do. There weren't any books or magazines to spread out like when I go to when I go to Dr. Cohn's office. So I watched the clock clock and I read all the signs on the walls. I found out that I was in the emergency section of the hospital. 
After a while, the nurse came back. She gave me some paper and crayons. Here you go. Be a good boy and draw some pictures. Your mom would be out soon. I wondered if she knew about dribble, and that's why she was trying to be nice to me. I didn't feel like drawing any pictures. I wondered what they were doing to fudge in there. Maybe he wasn't such a bad little guy after all. I remembered that Jimmy Fargo's little cousin once swallowed the most valuable rock from Jimmy's collection, and my mother told me that when I was a little kid, I swallowed a quarter. Still, a quarter is not a turtle. I watched the clock on the wall for an hour and 10 minutes, and then the door opened and my mother stepped out with Dr. Cohn. I was surprised to see him. I didn't know he worked at the hospital. Hello, Peter, he said. Hello, Dr. Cohn. Did you get my turtle? Uh, no, he, not yet, Peter, he said, but I do have something to show you. Here are some uh, x-rays of your brother. I studied the x-rays as Dr. Cohn pointed things out to me. You see, there's uh, your turtle right there. I looked hard. Will Dribble be in there forever? I asked. No, 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 definitely not. We will get him out. We have uh, fudge. We gave Fudge some medicine already, and that should do the trick nicely. What kind of medicine, I asked. What trick? Um, castor oil, Peter. Castor oil, P Peter, my mother said. Fudge took castor oil and milk of magnesia and prune juice too, lots of that, and all those things will help Dribble get out of Fudge's tummy. We will just have to wait, Dr. Coton said, probably until tomorrow or the day after that. Fudge will have to spend the night here but I don't think that he's gonna be swallowing anything he isn't supposed to swallow from now on. How about Dribble, I asked. Will Dribble be all right? My mom and Dr. Cohn looked at each other. I knew the answer before he shook his head and said, I think you might have to get a new turtle, Peter. I don't want a new turtle, I said, and tears came to my eyes. I was embarrassed and I wiped them away with the back of my hand. Then my nose started to run and I had a sniffle. I want Dribble, I said. That's the turtle I want. My mother took me home in a taxi. She told me that my father was on his way to the hospital to be with Fudge. When we got home, she made lamb chops for dinner, but I wasn't even hungry. My father came home late that night. I was still up. My father looked gloomy. He whispered to my mom, nothing, not, not yet. The next day was Saturday, so no school. I spent the whole day in the hospital waiting room. There were plenty of people around and magazines and books too. It wasn't like the hard bench in the emergency hallway. It was more like a living room. I told everybody that my brother ate my turtle. They looked at me kind of funny, but nobody ever said that they were sorry to hear about my turtle, never even once. My mother joined me for supper in the hospital coffee, coffee shop. I ordered a hamburger, but I left most of it because right in the middle of my supper, supper my mother told me that if the medicine didn't work soon, Fudge might have to, be, might, might have, to have an operation to get dribble out of him. My mom didn't eat anything. That night, my grandmother came to stay with me. My mother and my father stayed at the hospital with Fudge. Things were pretty dreary at home. Every hour the phone rang. It was my mom calling from the hospital with a report. Not yet, I see, Grandma repeated. Nothing happening yet. I was miserable. I was lonely. Grandma didn't even notice. I even missed Fudge banging his pots and pans together. In the middle of the night, the phone rang again. It woke me up and I crept out in the hallway to hear what was going on. Grandma shouted, Whoopee, it's out, good news at last. She hung up and then turned to me. The medicine finally worked, Peter. All that castor oil and milk of magnesia and prune juice finally worked. The turtle is out. Alive or dead, I asked. Peter Warren Hatcher, what a question, my, my grandmother shouted. So my brother no longer had my turtle inside of him and I no longer had a turtle. I didn't like Fudge as much as I thought I did before that phone rang. The next morning, Fudge came home from the hospital. My father carried him into the apartment. My mother's arms were loaded with presents, all for Fudge. My mother put the presents down and kissed him. She said, Fudgy can have anything he wants, anything at all. Mommy is just so happy her baby is all better. It was disgusting. Parent, or presents and kisses and attention for Fudge. I couldn't even look at him. He was having fun. He probably wasn't even sorry that he ate my turtle. That night, my father came in or came home with the biggest box of all. It wasn't wrapped up or anything, but I knew it was another present. I turned away from my father. Peter, he said, this um, box is a surprise for you. Well, I don't want another turtle, I said. Don't think you can just make me feel better with another turtle because you can't. Who said anything about a turtle, son? Dad asked. You see, Peter, 
Your mother and I think that you've been a good sport about the whole situation. After all, Dribble was your pet. I looked up. Could I be hearing this right? Did they really remember about me and Dribble? I put my hand inside the box and I felt something warm and soft and furry. I knew it was a dog, but I pretended to be surprised when he jumped up on my lap and then licked me. Fudge cried, oh, doggy, see doggy. He ran right over and grabbed my dog's tail. Fudge, my father said, taking him away. This is your brother's dog. Maybe someday you will have a dog of your own, but this dog belongs to Peter. Do you understand? Fudge nodded. Peter's dog. That's right, my father said. Peter's dog. And then he turned to me. And just to be sure, son, he said, we got a dog that's going to grow quite big, much too big for your brother to swallow. We all laughed. My dog was neat. I named him Turtle to remind me. The end. If you liked this book, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing, it's part of a whole series. So the next one in the series is called otherwise known as Sheila the Great. So maybe you can see if you can order that book and read it at home. I hope you enjoyed it. That's one of my favorite books of all times.